Fucking Pro Hello. Four One. And we're live. Yo, what's up? This is Shadow Rock and Pro Four One of the Floor Gangs and Knucklehead Tribe. And this is Jay Soul. Greetings to the world. I represent BTR Breaking and Eternal Style Crew. Let them know. And what's this going is on. yo. This is Gearheads Breakcast, the show about hacking culture and movement. Episode four. Are we episode four now? Three, my friend. Oh well, we did the we're pilot, so technically four. You right? Okay, three. All right, episode three. Hey, we're just winging it, bro. Like this is what it is. This is we're getting freestyle. We're it's organized, but not necessarily like so strict to the script. You know what I'm saying? Organized chaos. We'll get yeah, that intro you, right. Yeah, eventually, eventually. <laughs> all right. So Jay, what do you guys say about our sponsor? Oh, our sponsor. Yeah, just uh, wanted to give a shout out to Zen World. Zen World CBD. Check them out at zenworld.com and use our promo code for a discount. This guy, he, uh, well, this company, they sponsor us and they sponsor our, they support our culture. And on our last episode, we featured the, uh, the Las Vegas regional Olympic champ daydream. And he actually sponsored to their GoFundMe, which there you go. don't forget to check this out guys. If you guys yes. can share, donate it any, any way, go to GoFundMe.com and search for breaking for gold. If not go to this guy's, uh, IG and the link will be in his bio with that said. Yeah. And just to add to that, I mean, you know, like he's trying to bring his whole family, their whole family is trying to go, not just method Mark and daydream, but the little brother, the mother, you know what I mean? The whole family to go support them, to go to uh, the regionals over in Philly in the Philly yeah. open. So I think and it'd be really break. dope. Yeah. And they all break. They all break. And so they yeah, and to the melting pot in Hawaii because they want to check out and hang out with the 808 boys. I think that's a really dope opportunity for all of them to feel what Ohana is, you know what I'm saying? So please, please support Daydream and support Zen World CBD. Yes, sir. Uh, other than that, just some catching up to today. Uh, wanted to give a shout out to B-Boy Why Not. It was his birthday. Bah, 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 bah. Bah, 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 bah. <laughs> we'll, we'll get production at some point. Yeah, we'll get a soundboard, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then also from Rock Force Crew, um, we got representing Beat Rock Crew, Josh Skittles. Yeah, give Happy a shout out to him as well. Yes, sir. There you go. You know, we recognize people out here. You know what I'm saying? But without further ado, we're going to talk about our main subject today. And that is the similarities between MMA and breaking. And when I say the similarities of MMA and breaking, I'm not just talking about movement, right? Because there, there are definitely, like, influences from, like, martial arts that go into breaking. But, and then vice versa. Like, you know, there's versa, yeah. guys, there was the guys that, you know, that break, that added breaking to jiu-jitsu. But I'm talking more of, like, the concept of the spectator sport of MMA. You know what I mean? Kind of the... What we thought, like when we first saw MMA and how we have a mirror to breaking and the marketing of mixed martial arts, specifically UFC, right? We're going to talk about that because I think not a lot of people see this, the, the, the mirror, right? Not, pe not a lot of people see the parallels that needs to be kind of like put out there because that, so that way our art slash sport can grow to have spectators. And this episode of Gearheads Break uh, Breakcast, we're going to try to, like, have you guys see that. And hopefully you guys could kind of, like, help push uh, this art sport to the general public. And, yeah, contribute to the dialogue and what we're doing, right? As yeah. our cultural art form of breaking is transcending our immediate community fast. Mm -hmm. We already have the corporate sponsorships. It's, there, there's a schedule for it. And, of course, the Olympics, right? Perception is everything and right now i mean the perception of breaking as we can go down the chron the chronological timeline hollywood told us it's called break dancing right yep. we're going to put break dancing right here and you know we're yeah might add that just to communicate yep and, and that's that's a big thing is and what we're trying to do here with the break cast with the gearheads break cast right we're trying to help guide that and add context rich context um to how we perceive this art so this this parallel right here and you even use skateboarding that that could be another one and maybe you know, yep 
Eventually, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll do that. that. Here, but yeah, yeah, for sure. We got some good, good points that you've been on this for yep. years. You've been talking years. this for years. So yep. I'm excited to about, hear what you have to say. About six, about six years. Um, first, I want to just say, first of all, I think the thing of the fear of exploitation, we need to get over that as far as breaking culture. We need to get over that already. Because a lot of the people that, like, especially the Cypher B-Boys or Keep It Real B-Boys, which I am one of them, right? The fear is the exploit. That's why a lot of them don't want it in the Olympics because of the fear of exploitation, what happened in the 80s. But the problem back then in the 80s were the people that were in charge of Hollywood and stuff like that were guys that were in television or film since the 20s, 40s. So a lot of them come from vaudeville. A lot of them come from this old school mentality of marketing versus today. People that are behind the scenes as far as marketing ESPN, the Olympics, they're all people my age. They're 40 who grew up in hip hop. So people are afraid of this thing. People are afraid of this thing when the guys that are in charge in the 80s weren't of the culture. Yet now they're all my age that grew up on like a public enemy or a KRS one and grew up on freestyle session and grew up on these things. So the first stigma that we have to conquer is the, the fear of exploitation. Because to me, there's no such thing as underground anymore. Now that there's social media, there's no such thing as underground. It's just everything is open. It's just how you market it, right? And this is why I'm relating it MMA to breaking. So to describe the first part of it is that breaking is like a fight, right? Like you're basically battling. You're, you're fighting without actual like physical contact. You're, it's still confrontational. You still get in each other's face. It's still physical. But the thing is, no one's getting physically hurt, right? They're getting their egos hurt at the most, right? Or maybe if they have an accident, maybe they break their arm by trying to do a move or get a concussion by doing, but that's rare in a competition that is, right? So yeah. what do you think, how do you think about that? Do you feel like fighting and breaking are very similar, Jay? Well, for sure, they're, well, it's combat. One is right. non-physical, right? right? So, so everything you right. say with, with the psychology to it, Right. Um, what we're doing, there, there's variables that we can talk about with that, right? When you're yeah. fighting, you have an opponent. So you have somebody mm -hmm. else that you're accounting for. That is your environment that you are reacting to. That's right. easy, obviously music, right? So yeah. it's a little, yep. I'm not going to say it's easier. I'm not going to say it's um, not as depthful, but it requires a lot of internalization and just internal awareness, right? right. How can I maximize this? Um and you know that those are the the similarities the differences is um yeah like fighting it's easy to say this guy won right most times yeah unless it yeah. goes to decision yeah. right and when it goes to decision right. no one's really right. happy and right. breaking right. it goes to decision and no one's right. really happy yeah so yeah yeah a, yeah that's one of the the parallels or things to kind of notice about that um right. yeah so i mean yeah I like I mean, what you're doing with this. Like we, we yeah. can talk about the similarities and differences right. for sure, but but how you're you're comparing the parallel because we can we can learn from it, right? That's yes. That's kind of one of the main things. Yes. Yes. So the whole thing is to so let's look at uh and this is for everyone that's that's not a b-boy or b-girl that's tuning in. So there's a part of a culture like let's say in breaking a street fight. A cipher is a street fight. You know what I mean? That's a street there's cuz there's no rules. There's no time limit. There's no, there's no, um, there's no real judges. Sometimes it's just like a guy could be super whack, but if he has the stamina and can keep on going, then he, in his mind, he thinks he won because the other guy walked away, right? But the guy could be physically nothing. It's just sheer ego. This guy's like going in and attacking this guy, this other, you know, player or this other guy in the cipher or girl in the cipher, and you know, it's just like there's there. It's like a street, like that's why it's like a street fight. There's no real winner. Because sometimes you can't get knocked out. Sometimes people both get knocked out. Sometimes it's it's whoever has the strongest will. So there's not so many quantifiable things in a cipher, right? And that's where a lot of B-boys and B-girls like to live in. They don't want to be quantified. They don't want to be judged by a crowd. They want to be fulfilled and validation from their own ego. Because even if they're losing, they'll keep going just like a street fight. Like some people will just keep going. You know what I mean? D duration is one of the ways you can quantify uh, the winner or the yeah. dominant party yeah. in a cipher, right? Who gives up yeah. first? Yeah. Um, that that's the the most bare way to kind of like look at a cipher and, and approach right. it, right? 
Right. Um, but also like who whose nervous system is being affected, right? Like, yeah. Who's yeah. not performing like you know they can? Who's getting right, shit? right, right. right? <laughs> yeah. So that those are That's other real. ways you can quantify it in a cipher. Right. Yeah. So in that sense, yeah, I mean it, it's a little more real, man. Yeah. So and so what the Gracies did with the partners that created UFC, they created the 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 competition UFC because the thing is the Gracies used to have these fights in the garages, right? where they would challenge Kung Fu guys. They would challenge karate guys. They would challenge boxers in their garage. And they did this and they beat up everyone. They always beat the people. So they wanted to create a bigger venue. So not a lot of people know that the Gracies were investors of the first UFC. And their whole thing was like, we're gonna take our weakest guy. Rickson was like, Hickson was like the top fighter. He looked like a fighter. He was in shape like a fighter and he could like, he could throw those hands and do good groundwork. Hoist was opposite. He's the skinnier, more fragile guy. And we're about to show you what happened in the UFC. But first, before the UFC, before the Gracies were worldwide, what we thought of if there was a no, no holds uh, bar fight, it was going to be the karate guy that's going to win. It was going to be the MMA guy. Uh, it was going to be the Muay Thai guy that was going to win. It was going to be the boxer who was going to win. It was going to be the it was going to be the uh, the uh, kung fu guy who was going to win. So what we're going to do is show the clip of the very first fight in UFC. This guy who represented the sumo. And remember, UFC didn't have weight classes back then. So this is very similar to like there's no categories in a cipher, right? So there's a guy, a sumo guy, right, who obviously is Samoan. And then we got this Savat guy from, from uh, Amsterdam doing – uh, Savati, which is a, a European style of kickboxing. And this is who we thought was going to win the UFC, right? So, Jay, if you can pull up that clip. It's kind of brutal, y'all. <laughs> it's kind of brutal, but I just want to show the realism of it. And remember, back then, there was no categories. And it was still tournament style, right? It was still tournament see? style. Yep. Right here. Play it from here. Yeah, play it from here. So right, we so thought... Get, just a yeah. warning again. This is pretty explicit right here, guys. So, yeah. 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 So this is the very first UFC, and look at this. No gloves. Nothing. Boom, 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 boom. Bap. Boom. Bap. Okay. All right, let's stop right there. I think that was enough. Boom. Right so the guy, right obviously right the Savati right. practitioner won, right? The Savat practitioner won. This is who we thought was going to win the UFC. You know what I'm saying? We thought it was going to be a boxer, right? Because this is the first time it happened. John McCain even called this human cockfighting. Because it wasn't a sport. This was not a sport. You know, this was just like, let's see who's the biggest and baddest. And that's what it was, right? It wasn't like, there was no rules yet. And this is why it couldn't be marketed. Because there was no rules. Because it was too violent. Like, even Jay was, like, surprised when, you first, when I first showed you the clip. You never saw this clip, right? I've seen it. Uh, I've seen the two matchup. Just seeing the right. contrast of this stout guy that should be right. being the skinnier guy. Like right. I understand physics and the mass of this guy should be able to produce <laughs> more force, but it doesn't. What we know now is it doesn't quantify moving good, right? And movement is everything. Yeah. And then it was just brutal. Like there was no gloves. You know what I'm saying? Like that was the first time the uh, sumo wrestler f really felt a punch and a kick to the face. Oh, you know what I mean? Man. His nervous system yeah. went like, uh, right? This is the closest to breaking with no rules. This is the closest because it's up. So this is where this is the relation. When we first see breaking as a non-practitioner, we're going to look at power moves as the dominant movement. Just like in MMA, before we knew about Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu was, we thought the striker and kicker was going to be the one that was dominant. Striking and kicking is basically power moves and breaking. If I'm not a practitioner, a flare, air flare, and head spin is going to speak louder than footwork. If I'm not a fighter, a punch and a kick is going to speak louder than jujitsu when you first see it. What do you yeah, think I mean, about that? Yeah, the psychology to it too, right? If we think about when this happened, when was the first UFC match? This like 93, 94. Early? Yeah, okay, early, early, early 90s, early 90s. So what was the pop perception? The Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris. Bruce Lee, Chuck Norris, Van Damme, 
Van Damme, yeah, Van Damme. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's fixed, right? It's flash. Yeah. So you're saying, yeah, you want to see someone who looks like that archetype, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, Tyson, is, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, yeah. like straight up, like they look like a fighter, right? They're in shape yeah. and, you know, all this. So that was the perception. And that's the only thing we knew. So when a person watches Red Bull BC1, that's not a fan, that's not a practitioner. When they watch a guy like Pocket lose, they're confused. Just like when we first saw Royce Gracie. Let's pull up that, that clip of Royce Gracie. He has Ken Shamrock, bro. <laughs> so let's watch that clip real quick. Now, this remember, this is like early 90s. So what we thought of a fighter was like this guy that was chiseled in shape, super masculine. See? Look at that guy. He looks like a freaking beast, bro. Like. Yeah, this guy's on some extra medicine right here. I'm yeah. <laughs> look at this kid. Yeah. Now look at look at Royce Gracie. Half his height. Look, he just takes him down. And look, you still think the dominant, oh, Ken Shamrock got him. But what we didn't know that Royce wanna be on his back. Royce was vining him. We didn't know. We thought those kicks aren't doing nothing. But the thing is they were distracting him from doing a technique to give him an arm bar right here. We didn't know that at the time. We thought, yo, yeah, Shamrock was just going to dominate with his strength, his pure strength, right? And right there, it's like, oh, those punches don't count, but those were just uh, strategic hits to get him distracted to sneak a, a arm somewhere. Well, yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. Let's unpack yeah. that a little bit. Jazz. Yeah. What, is, what is syncopation? What is jazz? What is the, you know, the catalyst of jazz? It's doing things that's not expected. Right to right. set to set yeah. things up, yes. and get back on yes. the framework or the pattern, right? Yes, that's that's one of the the parallels of what we're seeing and what we're that's what breaking is, right? Like, right. What, what are the, what are these little movements doing? It doesn't really translate to me. What is this heel kick doing? Right, Seeing right, heel, right. Yeah. Obviously, if you're getting heel kicked in the liver and the rib and the kidney, you know what I mean. These organs and uh, you know part vital parts of your body, you feel it. But when you're watching it, yeah, it's like, oh wow, look at this petty guy. He's doing this stuff. Right. But the intricacies and the nuance yeah. that makes somebody intelligent and dominant in terms of being um, just in tune with their environment. Again, you know, we know we we address the different environmental or the environmental differences between an MMA fighter having an opponent right. and a dancer having the music and the yeah. ground and whatnot. But yeah, I just wanted to add that right right there, just to really tie it into what you're saying. Right. So that's the thing. When I was watching this back in the early 90s, I didn't know what was going on. I was like, Ken Stramark's going to get him, not knowing that Hoist is actually in the dominant position right now. I didn't he know the definition. He's changing, right? Now he's on top. And now yeah, now, and point. after this, and now he tapped out. Look, he One tapped minute. out. One minute mm -hmm. in. That was amazing because it was – look, and look, Hoist wants done. to keep going. Hoist wants to keep going. Like, are you done? Are you, are you done? done? Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Damn, he's like, yeah, I'm done. Look Boom. At look at the, like, yo, are you done? Are you done? Yo, he's, look how skinny Royce is, bro. Oh, my God. This is your drunk uncle from, uh, <laughs> from right here. look at this guy. Um, yo, and look at Ken Shamrock. He's fr frustrated. Twice as big. Yo, he has weight on him. And he's like, yo, I, it's not that. And it's the, the thing is, you could tell that Ken Shamrock is not hurt. But he knew that strategically he wasn't superior. He knew if he kept going, he was going to wrap him up again. So and that's it. So with reality, right? Like this yes. guy's like, hey, let me, let me get big. Let me get bulky. Let, yeah. let me look bigger. And yeah. that's, that is a tactic in nature, right? Looking bigger. Yeah. But in, when it comes to reality, right? Body intelligence, spatial awareness, and all that reigns supreme. And the B-boy, the dancer, the... the the artists, athlete, are the ones that are really, really just intelligent and excelling at this. And this is a good example of that right here, fighting. Yeah. You see it and yeah. dancing everywhere. Yeah. So here's the thing. So now let's put it back to us. So here's the thing. When I first watched, um, you know, watched this, right? And I was doing different martial arts. I was doing like Wing Chun Kung Fu. I was doing Capoeira and stuff like that. I didn't understand what was going on. I just knew all of a sudden he was in a headlock, right? Ken Shamrock was in a headlock, right? Didn't understand the vocabulary. Didn't understand 
the um, the science that was going on. I just thought he was rolling around. So fast forward to 2022. The question is to you guys out there in the audience. Do you guys know what a Kimura is? Do you guys know what a rear naked choke is? Do you know you guys know what a guillotine is? Do you know what a triangle choke is? Do you know what an arm bar is? This is part of our lexicon now. Yeah. We understand what these moves are, right? But the thing is, how did we understand? How did we go from 1993? We didn't know what was going on. He's just rolling around to the floor. Now that there's a vocabulary, you know what I mean? That we all, like 10 out of, five out of 10 people off the street that are MMA fans will know these movements. Even if you like, if you're a fan of a stand up, if you're a fan of Izzy or you're a fan of uh, Silva, you know, you'll still know these moves. How did that happen? Or a fan of Diaz. Huh? So. Yeah, or a fan of Diaz. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. Stock to slap. Shout out to Stock to slap. Shout out to Stock to slap. Yeah. BJ Penn. So, how do we know these? How do we know this stuff? Well, this is how commentary and pull up the next clip. The, the turning point for UFC was actually the Ultimate Fighter. That was the show that introduced everyone. It was a weekly show on Spike TV. And they best basically showed the different coaching, uh, uh, coaching ways, training, and definition of what moves were what. How did when you're on the floor, how did uh how did that person dominate on the floor? You know what I'm saying? Instead, and now at this point, UFC has rules. Now that there's gloves, now there's a time limit, now there's rounds, now there's weight class, right? So what do you think is happening right now in breaking? There's categories now, right? There's youth, there's uh, women's, there's males, right? All within a athletic structure, a sports structure. Mm -hmm. Well, the cage so, in itself, too, not, not to go off topic real quick, you're mentioning all these, like, rules and stuff. It's in a cage. What does a cage resemble in our Yes, season? yeah, a cypher. Right? So think of the dancers that are going in there, right, the Izzy's. Uh, right. Ferguson's, you know, all these people that know yeah. how to move rotationally and understand yeah. more space around them. Yeah. They move better and move right. better gives you the advantageous position right. and makes you more unpredictable. And we see it, right? So right. translating into, you know, that um, super, super important to point out right there. Yeah. Yeah. Keep rocking this clip. Rocking. Yeah. There you go, Matthews. Uh, the thing is, like, the thing is, right now, we're almost at this point. We're almost at early 2000s MMA. We're almost there, right? What we need in the culture is to teach the general public what footwork is. Because when there's a stand-up, right, stand-up fighter, punching and kicking, you know what punching and kicking is. A regular general audience person know what a head spin is. A general audience person know what a flip is. A general audience person uh, uh, spectator, they don't know what an air flare is, but they know it's dynamic and big. They don't know, they know where the flare is. They know what a windmill is. This is your punching and kicking. You're striking, right? Your power moves are your striking. What we have to introduce to the general public is the definition of footwork. Footwork and jujitsu are mirrored because there's little movements in jujitsu when you know the person is dominant when they're actually fighting. Same thing as footwork. What's a CC? What's a sweep? What's a six step? These little things, we need to educate the general public just like we did, just like how UFC Ultimate Fighter and Joe Rogan describe Jiu Jitsu. So, how would you define footwork, pro? Right now, you're talking to somebody who doesn't know. You're like, hey, hey, pro, uh, Sir Profo, what is footwork? <laughs> footwork is the, actually the original like epitome of breaking it was the first movement that was original because even though we could say the the only power moves that are original to breaking is windmills and um windmills and air flares right in the russian circus they've done head spins and 90s there's there's this tap dancer the gymnast in the 20 the 40s this one woman um who did play, 90s yeah. yeah who did 90s right even African travel dancers did head tracks or head rolls, right? Or head bridges, right? All these things have been done before. 
but the sequence of footwork was specifically created from breaking that originated in the South Bronx. And we had Charlie Rock, one of the originators, right? We got, we got Keith and Kevin, the legendary twins. We got Fuji. We got like Dancing Doug. We got Trixie. We got Sasa. These are the guys that built the foundation. Then after that was Spy and Track 2 and Shorty Rock and Mongo Rock. And all these guys contributing to the definition of what we know as footwork. That then we got to the you know second generation B, uh, third generation B boys, late second generation B boys, which we know as the rock steady and the New York City Breakers. That create that that evolved the moves from windmills and head spins. But their most original thing was footwork. And footwork is basically you're sitting in a squatter position. So describe that part. Then I'll describe all the definitions of that. So describe what it is to sit on sit on footwork from a kinesiology standpoint well footwork is the uh it's the physical embodiment of drumming right so so when you say it's the original it makes sense all the conditions were there right it's right. simply foot patterns but as you know it's mainly i mean almost equally it's hand patterns right That's yes the wake shift yes. happens yes typical locomotion with humans we we're bipedal we walk on two feet here we introduce two more feet to the ground so it's super important to understand that how we position it, where we position it for weight transfer. Because that, that's right. all movement really is. When we have right. really different points of contact, you know, on the ground. Um, but yeah, it's 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 we create patterns, we create rhythmic patterns. The rhythm certainly gets lost within it, but that's that's what it is designed to do. With yeah. that, you have footsteps, you have kicks, you right. have shuffles, you know, and, and all let's, those are the yeah, let's get a picture. Let, let's get it just us talking. Let's just get us talking. Enough of these 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 gorillas. <laughs> yeah, I know. I'm, I'm caught up. Uh, like watching. Yeah. I'm talking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Continue. Yeah, but no, nah, you're you're saying. Yeah, no. I mean, so our body is crunched up, like you said. We're positionally, if we're looking at it from a from a global position, our body is flexed, right? A triple flex, or even more if we count our toe. It's yeah. Toe, ankle, knee, hip, and even our spine is flexed like this for the most part, right? Right. right. And this is one of the things that needs to be addressed. Side tangent, real quick, because yep. we're like this. We're not. We're not in extension or even neutral for that sense. Yeah. The backside of our, uh, the posterior chain of our body, mainly in the midsection, our hammies, glutes, and low back, we're not really activating it. We we use it slightly for stabilization, but right. because of that, that's why that's one of the the key contributors to knee injuries. Mm. A lot of I just had a topic about running, and people are like, "No, nah, I mean, just, just you know, break breaking. Breaking is your cardio, but mechanically, we are designed to our right. joints are designed for forward propulsion like this. Right. And I don't want to go out too much of a tangent away from. Did I answer the first question before I move? Yeah. On? No. Yeah. Yeah. You got. You oh, gave the mechanics. You gave the mechanics of it. And I, I wanted to explain that because for the b boys and b girls out there, they understand what the culture is. They understand a lot of the history. But for the, the the general audience, you're explaining why, you know, the rhythm, the, the purpose of rhythm, how it was created because of the music, because of the energy, because of the environment, because of just the options of using your hands and feet together rhythmically, created yeah. these patterns. Yeah. 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 Create these patterns. So that's the thing that the general public doesn't know. Because their first, you know, maybe the first person that they see is Pocket. Maybe the first person they see is like, you know, Bumblebee for the general public when they're scrolling on TikTok or Instagram. They're first seeing these big feats, which is again, not taking away from breaking because it added to breaking, but it's just punching and kicking. And if it was just Muay Thai, which is a power move contest, if you really think about it, that's Muay Thai or that's kickboxing. But if you want the full MMA, you have to know jujitsu. So guess what? Breaking is like, you have to know some ground movement, yeah. Or else you won't make it past a thing because some guys might know more than you. So let's pull up that clip with Little G and Roxrite 2011 in Moscow, Red Bull BC1. And this will show the point of what I'm making. We're going to commentate it, but what we're going to do is we're going to turn Roxrite's movements into jujitsu movements and Little G's movements into kicking and striking. Okay. You know what I'm saying? We're going to mirror them. And now you'll see because when people first see this, they're not going to understand how Rocks Right won this, right? Boom. So here's a strategy. Rocks Right goes out first. The super relaxed, right? Yep. Yeah. 
And the thing is, he's going to accentuate the top rock. Not the funkiest, but aggressive motion. Then that little back rock, people aren't even going to understand. That's almost like he's doing a triangle choke, right, to an arm bar. And these little movements right here, you know, not everyone to the layman's eye is going to think that's, that's vital or that's important, but it is. Because it's the little, then he goes for the power. Now it's almost like he went from ground to striking. Now let's watch little G, right? He's not exaggerating the top rock, so it's almost like he doesn't have any groundwork. You know what I mean? And then straight to striking, right? He's going straight to striking. Would you agree with that, Jay? For sure. I mean, what you notice right here as a layman is this guy looks the closest to us. When you talk about about a power head, yeah, um, that's the closest look to a human superhero, right? Right. Yeah. But what we're but seeing thing, right here is a scientist. Yeah, right. and you and you saw him do the little elbow uh, elbow walks, that little, and then stick in the freeze. Yo, his energy is consistent. And these little movements are adding up, which people don't see. The layman's don't see. B-Boys and B-Girls can see it. Yeah. Like, yo, did you see that transition? But to a layman, look. So like, he matched the freeze. Round, yeah, if huh? this is a one-round fight, yeah. um, Superman, a.k.a. Little G, can probably win it. But right. what we're looking at is intelligence, right? And a highly developed right. Um, right. Representation of the human body. Look at all the shapes. Well, right. not with, with him so much, but with rocks, right? That's what we're seeing. Yeah. We're seeing Superman versus Batman. And, and yeah. Who won yeah. That yeah. And you can even say that, like, right. Rocks, right? We, we just saw, we just saw uh, Royce Gracie, like, Rocks, right's doing little heel kicks to his liver to open him up, to expose him. And he crash. Yeah. He's like, to oh, wrap, okay. to wrap him up. See what I'm saying? See what, look at this. Like, we just named, right? It was intimidating. It's like Rockstrike took his serotonin. You know what I'm saying? Rockstrike took the serotonin and just locked it in oh. with little movements. You know what I'm saying? Like he's doing little transitions to his back. It's almost like Ken Shamrock. Like Ken Sham he's like now he's getting over Ken Shamrock. You know what I'm saying? Like this is the relation. Oh man. Just mangling, mangling him. You know what I mean? Look, he's already distracted and he tried to play his game. You don't want to play the other guy's game, especially if he's stronger at it. That's like a striker trying to do jujitsu when he's never taken any jujitsu training. So he's gonna okay, he's tripling down on it on his uh what you call it on his uh punches and kicks. But the problem is yeah. he's almost he's doing the, the same, same thing. Yeah, he's running the same thing. Yeah. The crowd loves it though, right? Look at the crowd. Yeah, yeah. I mean, physically, it's incredible, man. It's it's yeah. I mean, you can't really knock there you go. Doing, man, on that there, level. There you go. Yeah. But understanding can, the culture, understanding the music, understanding where it came from, there was, and you can look at the face, look at that exchange yeah. right there. Lil yeah. G already knew. He knew. Boom. And it's not like Rock Strike doesn't have any uh, strikes oh, or uh, punching or striking. You know what I mean? And that's where Rock Strike got him because, like, yo, I can match you in the punching and kicking. My dominant movement is jujitsu. Dude, how many times has there been an MMA match where that has happened? Right? Where a jujitsu player takes out a, a, a striker. I mean, and opposite has happened too, right? Where strikers take out uh, floor game players. But it's the same thing. This is how we got to market breaking in the Olympics. We got to market like it's jujitsu. You know what I'm saying? Dude, this is a great moment because this is the first time uh, that someone did it without air flares. That won a BC one without air flares and without flips. You know what I'm saying? For real. Like, did it without, air, like, straight up the big dynamics. Who did it in little movements. You know what I mean? It's I was almost say like Ronnie, but you're right. Ronnie got, he, he does a, a, some dope elbow air flare thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. He has a now, look how, look how everyone was excited. Why? Because this is the first time that happened in, in breaking history. Where a guy did it with little, like with intricate movements, little intricate movements versus just big stage pleasing movements. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And what was dope is we just broke down the similarities. We just watched, we basically just watched Ken Shamrock versus Hoist Gracie, but in breaking. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We just it's educated the crowd, on. Jay. No, no, invaluable. But I'm saying it's hard. Um, this is this is what we need to um, overcome right here. 
It's because Ken Sham Shamrock said, hey, I quit. I guess yeah. looking at Lil G's face at the end, he kind of yeah. said that. Yeah, yeah, dude. In reality, you no. Know, in this day and age, people are like, "Oh, okay, they're trained up. Like, even if I crash and I know I lost, I'm gonna act like I won." Right, 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 right. Like that, right? But yeah, yeah. Um, that's the thing that needs to be over overcame, right? So the judges yeah. did see that. That's yeah. kind of contributing to that, and it's one hundred that that's being developed, right? A lot more energy and attention is being put into how we perceive and how we right. observe and how yeah. we judge what we're looking at. Right. I'd like to hear a little more about, you know, what's going on with that. It seems like pretty depthful, though, with the right. Trivium system and whatnot. I know there's yeah, yeah. a lot of other systems, and I like to see all the systems in cycle and not just one take it, you know? Right, right. But, I mean, you'll see. I mean, that's why I gave this perception. I wanted to do this episode because it was like kind of like, dude, we don't. no one talks about this. No one talks about how there's the similarities, and this is how we can market it. We do – honestly, my dream – would be there would be like an ultimate fighter, but all B boys and B girls. That same train we film the same training camp. Yeah. We film like okay, we're gonna do this challenge of just all power moves. Who can win that? A challenge of just all top rock. A challenge of just all footwork. So we're developing the people that aren't necessarily strong at their at their at their strengths. Mm -hmm. How they will do when they're challenged? Because in the end of the day, after all that's done, they're gonna become better all around anyway by being challenged in these aspects that maybe they're not so strong in. And it'd be dope to film that and have them all in a house do yeah, the exact same format. That's just one concept of yeah. what would, would make up a, a dope training camp specific for breaking, right? And breaking competitors at the highest level. Yeah. Um, I know things have, have been, I know multiple people who's been trying to do it. Right. And, you know, hopefully I'm pretty sure funding is the main thing. Funding gets, yeah. Yeah. gets found for that. Um, and that, yeah, and the the other thing is, and the other thing is commentary. We need really good commentary to describe, not to the b boys and b girls that know what footwork is and flow is. We need people to describe it to the general audience that don't know the depth. Joe Rogan played a big part of being that. He played a big part of being that person to describe it. Oh, the Fear Factor guy just—he's into MMA too, and but he understands these movements. Yeah, he made it exciting to listen to. Oh. He did. He reversed that. Blah 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 blah. Because he knew what he's looking for, versus just like, oh, that guy's dope style. Like, no, we need to be descriptive. Shout out to Jay Sola and myself <laughs> and Ark <laughs> yeah. of what to see and what you know and what and what and how you know a person's winning a battle. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That's what we need for the Olympics. That's what we need for the future to help grow the audience. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? To help yeah, grow the audience. Touching back on what you said earlier, like you, you asked, might've been rhetorical. Hey, fast forward to 2022. Do you guys know what a Kimura is? Do you know what a yeah. Kimura is? Yeah. Or you know what that is? Yeah, they do. Because when they go to work, they go to the gym. Someone's like, yo, did you see Conor McGregor? Right. The, or, or, you know, like people are talking about it and it takes just that. It takes knowing what it's called. And then somebody being like, hey, Okay, watch this. He's watching. You see his hand right there. Now watch. Or it's going to go like this. And they're like, oh, okay, I see that. The nuance of it, right? It's, it's so hard if right. you're not doing it yourself. Yeah. Yeah, adding adding that rich and depthful commentary with the vocab and everything is what's going to get it to that point. Everybody right. wants to – it's human psychology and nature. We all want to be able to predict the future. It's survival. Yeah, exactly. I want to know yeah. when Armageddon's coming, basically. Right. It's, yeah, it's innate in us. We want to know. So if we can talk about it, that puts us a step closer to being able to predict what's gonna. Yeah. And this is like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Investment. This is this is my dream, right? To be at a bar and I'm sitting there having a beer, and this a 64 year old, four year old white guy goes, "Oh man, you know, Pockets Power was really dope. But I'm a big fan of like Steve's and his CCs, dude." That would be that's the dream right there. That right there will lead us to a, a the first six figure contract, at least six figure contract to a B boy or B girl. So how do you think a Keebs would pull that off? Let's say it's a one round battle, and let's really like let's really highlight uh, a technical footwork style transitionary against a blatant force generating style. Like how do you how would you paint this to somebody? Like look. You're not seeing this. This is what it is. He would have to triple down on his strengths and like really outperform 
So it might be his stamina might have to have to be better. His moves have to be bigger as far as the intricate things, right? And yeah. really to the music and dominate in that way. You know what I'm saying? We'd, ha- like, we'd have to educate as intelligence, aka spatial awareness and and body, you know, body and body intelligence. That being of equal or a higher order of blunt force. That's right. what's not when we're looking at somebody like a rocks right or somebody with a textile. And they go up against them. It's like you said, it's easy. But how do we educate on that? And if we understand the difficulty, obviously getting someone to practice it, you know, would be the first thing. Right. Most people from the 80s probably has, you know. Yeah, exactly. They know how hard it is. (laughs) But the intelligence of being like, hey, yo, I found this pocket. And hey, you know, we all know this this sound coming up. Watch me watch me take you somewhere your mind never thought it could go, aka jazz, right? Let let me accent something unexpected. Right. And take it off the rhythm real quick and pick back yeah. up. So you, you're yeah. psychologically desiring it. Right. That, how do we um, highlight the value, you know, in, in that itself, the jazz improvisation side of it? And the intelligence of segmenting something that never right. was segmented before, a.k.a. originality, a.k.a. rocks right, baby. How do we... <laughs> How do we show people that? And, and you know, you're saying again, right we now, have to make it consistent. We have to make we have to make it consistent as far as commentary. We have to make the other thing is we need everyone all together in it to help push it versus like, oh, that's Red Bull. Oh, that's the Olympics. I don't know. We need a community to back it up because, again, I'm going to say it here. The, our street team is this guys in the cypher. And if you're not supporting the Vert guys, which is the guys in the big competition, then it's all lost. And it's like, okay, you can go ahead, keep driving Uber for a living if you think you want to keep it real. But what if you could actually go to a cipher and get paid for it? And you don't have to do anything. You don't have to do anything different. You wouldn't want that. The only way we can have that is we support the guys that are in the verb, the guys that are like, you know, on the big skit stage. Because yeah. then we become cool. Because then guess what? The guy, the 65 year old guy that's at the bar. He's going to have a friend that just ciphers. It's like, oh, I know I know the insides of this thing. My boy breaks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then he becomes appreciative of this stuff. But it has mm-hmm. to be like they're, all ships float when the wave comes in. Don't hate on the wave because then you'll be left out. And that's all. That's Like there's going to be a lot of strategies. But these, to me, this is the main strategy we have to have uh, for moving on to make this a vocabulary that everyone understands. You know what I mean? Because, like, even in skateboarding, man, I don't have to skate, but I know what a kickflip is. At least heard of the term, right? Or 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 ollie, a ground ollie. Like, it's the same thing. Yeah. It's part of the lexicon. We just have to, like, be open to expose it and have the right venues to expose it to. And this is where the 2024 Olympics is a very big possibility it can be. You know what I'm saying? So, basically, just to sum up what you're saying, we need organization – Mm-hmm. And we need uh, just development in the street side of breaking AK yes. ciphering, right? Right now yes. it's on the stage because it's yeah. a spectacle. But how do, right. how do we make that a spectacle, right? Right, and, exactly. I mean, what we're, I mean, we're tying in and paralleling right here is a perfect way, MMA. Yeah. Right, there's street I mean, fights that is highly. And, yeah, it is. That's what it is because it's the same energy anyway. Like in a street fight, I could take out like in a cipher, a guy could do some dope footwork and then this guy starts locking. And then you're like, what the hell? It's like, well, it's a cipher. I could do whatever I want. There's no rules in this. It's like an all styles right. battle, right? Yeah, yeah. Or I could do a round that's five seconds. Like <laughs> why not? There's no rules in it. It's a strategy, right? If the if it's like dominantly whoever leaves first, you can as Nalian Ness says, you can nickel and dime a guy the whole day, the whole night. Just five cents here, ten cents here. Then by the end of the night, he's sick of you, and then he walks away. Like then you win, right? There's there's such thing as that. So yeah. it's like so it's the same philosophy, you know what I'm saying? It's just like it's like a street fight. While competition is quanti- a little bit more quantifiable, but now we're for and like I said, this this podcast, this episode was about just letting the general audience know how we look at it, so you guys can relate, so you guys could be fans. Next time you watch a b boy video or b girl video, you go, oh, that person has dope footwork. Because of this video, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Instead of like, well, I don't understand how that guy won or how that girl won. She did head spins and he didn't. I don't get it. Now you have a, a reference point with this video because this event, something like this has never been done. I, I think, as far as a video of of, of, of re- referencing and similarities and mirroring, 
yeah, I mean, if you want to talk about like the similarities of jujitsu and breaking, right? How jujitsu is the the main staple, right? Yeah, included or, or wrestling or jujitsu. Yep. And sh- some kind of a striking style, right? But jiu-jitsu, yep. you know, realistically. Right now, I mean, jiu-jitsu is the most dominant martial art in the world now. When yeah. back then, it didn't even exist like that. So let's look at uh, in the beginning, right? Gracie, the jiu-jitsu, they're like, oh, okay. Um, I got to learn jiu-jitsu to survive yeah. the sport. Yes. This what happened with, uh, with ABDC, right? Right. They started incorporating every crew that won was had a B boy or two or three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another parallel as well. Yeah, yes, yes. One hundred. Right. You needed a dynamic guy, right? You needed you know someone who could do the choreography and could do some some of the acrobatics and stuff like that. Specifically breaking. Yeah, dude, it's all relative, man. But yo, um, that was a good segment. This will be there will be a lot of hot takes from this. You know, before we got 15 minutes left, and you know what you're all here for. Y'all here for our reaction, commentary, and review of the Big Apple Open in New York that just happened. We're going to watch the finals of the B-Girl and the finals of the B-Boy. Up first is the B-Girls. Who got in the finals this year or this this month or this week? Can you see my screen? Not yet. Uh, We got... We got B girl Sunny and Lavix. Lavix is Lavix is killing it, man. Around. She's everywhere. This girl. Let, we're gonna talk. We're gonna analyze this real quick, and we, you'll see what I'm saying with this. Let's watch this battle. Sunny from New York City, and Lavix from the Bay from? Area. The Bay okay. Area. Damn, Tupac and Biggie. Let's go. <laughs> East Coast, West Coast. LA, but yeah, East Coast, West. So you get yeah. It. And we got to put the music on a little yep. bit. A little bit, a little bit. Up first, we got Vicky. Now, the thing is, Vicky has a natural dance style. Again, influenced by Circle Fire, Seth, out there in movement. Yeah. Soul so shifters. She uses her upper body. That's, that's yeah. a good way to kind of quantify yeah. somebody who can move good up top. And here's the up thing. She's relaxed way. with the threads. Again, we're talking about the little details, like jujitsu with the helicopter. Yo, she's actually even looking stronger now than she did last week in Minnesota. Oh, that's interesting. Well, you got that New York vibe too. And, and look at the, for me, the floor and, and the circle and everything that yeah. adds to the energy, man. Here comes Just Sunny. Now, she, Sunny's really good at power. And she has good form of forward too. Good flow. Windmill flare, body glide, baby freeze. Can, yeah. Not the thing really, is, uh, positionally clear with you know her texts and steps and stuff like that. Yeah. Now here comes Vicky again, straight with the heel clipper, take away the energy of the uh, the last uh, round, and Smiling. back to the reset on top. Yeah. Yeah, she's and looking again, down, but her chin is up. That's, that's I, so much for the performance aspect of it, man. Again, her serotonin is up. You know, she already just had two victories, so she's feeling really good and confident. Yeah, and expressing each little detail again. Shout out to Chez for that move right there. The kid David yeah. uh, does as well. The one like that. Yeah, that might be the Bay Area influence right there. Yes, sir. Oh, with the Webster. Eighties, but that yeah. was the, the, the. Yeah, just like just like yes. flip rock. Yeah. The... Was that from Breaking or that jazz dancer did that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Special K. Yeah. Now, know. now, now. Here's the thing. That was dope. But you could tell it was almost non-committal as far as movement. She didn't commit all the way to them. And that's the thing about little detail moves. You have to commit all the way as far as your belief in the move, right? She's, she's not connected. She's not in the pocket. That's the biggest yeah. difference between the two. Her moves don't, don't look in context because it's not in the pocket of the rhythm. Right. This girl is in the pocket the whole time. 100. Look, look at that. Crazy. Right. So she's taking her as she's taking her time. Every that's, move that's, is full. That's the pocket. Yeah, it's expressed, yeah. right? Positional yeah. clarity, transitional yeah. like freedom. She's not. She doesn't rush her transition. She knows. Right. Her, AKA in the pocket. It's right. the way you train. It's the way you compose. It's like she, she did, she's not. See, in the, she's not letting the music tell her what to do. So she's yeah. messing up. But and you could tell the strongest 
suit she has is her dynamics. That windmill flare is strong, stronger than mine, that's for sure. But she's barely do that more move. Text than she is dynamics. That's yeah. Like and that's the thing. She needs to, like, in her training, she needs to triple down on her basics and her music. We all know that Levix won that. That's her, what, third gold? Yeah. Oh, no, Sunny won. Oh, shit, my bad. What? We Whoa, Sunny won. Like that. Oh, my God. I was wrong. <laughs> Holy, oh, wait, wait, let's, let's talk about that real quick. Let's talk about that real quick. I was wrong. I was wrong. My bad. Maybe we our style preferences just stuck out just now. <laughs> yeah, maybe I, I might gotta check my bias. Let's let's, let's, let's yeah let's let's it. let's get let's get a, a on us let's get on us real quick. Okay, okay. Yeah. So, okay. okay. Let's see how Sunny did win. Let's talk about how Sunny okay. did win. Okay. Right. Like let's that. talk about that. Let's talk because we still watch the same thing. Like obviously we okay. <clears throat> just to let you guys know, we do have style preference we do have a style preference we do have a bias oh yeah but what's good about us is we can tell you how she did win though we can tell you how sunny did win so i'm gonna start with you jay okay so you know when you at the end of a fight and a close fight or i mean you see it periodically throughout the rounds how many strikes was thrown and how many landed right so when right I'm old girl is in the pocket uh levix levix yeah, levix she wasn't throwing as much as old other girl yeah, funny, but she yeah. was landing. So you know what I mean. That, yeah, I know. Keep yeah, in mind if we're using yeah. the MMA parallel, right? That, right. Yeah, but yeah. Was probably throwing more punches, so it looked like right. She was doing more, but she was stumbling. She was. Yeah, ah, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. It's around, hard to say. So yeah, yeah. I'm repeating. I, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. Here's the thing. Maybe so. Let's say that. The Vix, the moves that she was doing was equating to good jabs. Jab, jab, nice flow jabs. Maybe a little one, two, one, two, one, two. What Sunny did was maybe not so her one twos weren't as good, but her hooks were strong. You know what I mean? Whenever she transitioned, the flare was like whap, right? You know what I'm saying? Like it's maybe weak one, two. The setup was like uh uh boom, and it connects. You know what I mean? I know they you connect. Seen this. So yeah. I know you see this uh it's it's on. I seen it on Instagram. It popped up so much times on my feed. It was like a drunken outside of a bar fight. There was two guys scuffling, and the homie, the 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 scuffle moves, and homie comes in like two seconds later, clearly not not in time, and he throws like a crazy capoeira back kick, and, and, like, and oh, it connects. Your homie's there for you. No, he doesn't. Oh, he doesn't. You, you didn't see that clip? Yeah. No, nah, I never seen it. Viral. Yeah. It popped up so many times, and like it's so laughable. But that's kind of like what it was. Like I threw this flashy move, but it didn't hit. Right. So like what I mean, I think I mean I think that weight of and and here's another factor, the factor as Levix has been every week online, could play an oversaturation mm -hmm. of movements because we did see her do the same moves last week, right? And she's been on. She was at the Vegas, the Texas, the Minnesota, and the New York. And the problem with competitions like this when it's a tour. There possibly might be an oversaturation, depending on the judges, depending on the visibility. You know what I mean? It could play. A, I don't know if it played a part, but it could have played a part. You know what I'm saying? Um, big time. And yeah, I guess I guess that's that's the other side. If we're connecting it to jazz as well, if you yeah, how are you unpredictable? I mean, the, right. the music is the answer, but it's it's so yeah. yeah. If you're, you're you're battling weekend after weekend. Yeah, um, we didn't see the fatigue in her. You know, that's 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 right. a real yeah. thing when people are battling back to back. Yeah. But, um, but if we looked at it as a whole, the last month though, if yeah. we look at it as a whole, the last month, and that's what thing. Well, Sunny, we haven't seen Sunny yet. This is her first. You know what I mean? This is her first battle in the open, so it might play a factor. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a part of breaking. This could cause a lot of like interesting choices by the judges and you know you can see me and jay's face we we're surprised that you know that sunny won but again maybe sunny's dynamics you know her windmill flare flare combinations spoke loud right and the um the webster to the uh, the special k footwork style you know from breaking you know what i mean <laughs> jay. flip it up flip it up come on it's i mean you're, you're in a Partially extended, partially flexed, like do something from it. 
Yeah. I mean, people are just adding stuff in just to fill, just to fill up time. Where, where, where does the, uh, how do we put a, a hierarchy and a value on intelligence, right? We can see the physical side and it's easy to quantify. She's doing right. more. She's, you know, she's flipping. She's moving like this, like that, you know, she's moving well, right? There's speed, there's force that we can easily see, but the intelligence side of it, man, It'll happen. It'll happen. It'll just be like jujitsu, bro. It'll be just like jujitsu. Just has to be exposed. All right, let's watch the final battle. Let's see the finals of the New York Open. Silver and gold up in a place up first. So who do we got, Jay? Okay. Give a shout out to Levix and Sonny. So now we're gonna have the men's category, the B boys. Okay, hold on, hold on, real quick. Yeah. I got a – okay, here we go. Are you ready for it, pro? Yeah, we're ready. Let's go. Okay, this is what I'm talking about in regards to this last battle. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. This is going to be interesting. I can't believe you, you got... see this, man. I, dude, I wait. Oh. <laughs> I can't play this thing. I'm like, this ain't the finals. <laughs> oh, wait, this, this isn't the finals. But look. Okay, right, scuffle gone. And he comes in to help his buddy. Boom, let me throw his flashy kick. It's flashy, it's powerful, but what is it doing? Ah, uh, look, like he even seen. Oh, where are we? Look, his his eye, his vision was up right before he even threw it. He's seen them out of the way. Look. He's looking at him right there. He can see. I mean, he's probably drunk. Who am I kidding? Yeah, 100. You get my point. 100. He's you definitely get... drunk. That was good for, for a guy who was drunk, too. He had, means he has good balance. Well, you know, you know, All right, now. <laughs> All right, enough of the Capoeira, like, street fight drunken style. Let's watch the finals of the Big Apple Open. I'm just saying got... you're swinging, but what are you hitting, man? You... Okay. Dang. <laughs> you're, you're, like, you're like trying that point. <laughs> I'm like, yo, it was a haymaker, bro. Not letting All right, go. we got El Nino versus Gravity. Here we go. Boston versus New York. Well, I'm sure this matchup happened before too, right? 100, but the first time in the open, right? What a matchup. Uh, first, we got Gravity. Let's make that screen bigger. Let's watch this whole thing. Can you see? It's big, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Dope. Whoa. With the side flip, transition the, the side flip to burn. On that the, New York aggressive style. Okay. Pick up to flare. Walk backwards. Freeze, freeze, freeze. Freeze, freeze. Oh, he's in the yo, he's in the zone, man. He's in the work. Yeah. Let's see El Nino. The past, the past battles, even the one here, he's he's found the pocket, man. He's he's finding yeah. his groove and his rhythm. Yeah, oh his, man. His biology. Yeah, that first move from El Nino wasn't as strong. His heel clipper. Sorry. Yeah. Let me see. Folded. Let me see. Let me see. The signature. Yeah. Okay. No, no. Not before up. this. Before this. Before this. Before this. Okay. Okay. Right, with the right after grab his right right here. His heel clipper right here. Boom. Boom. It was kind of yeah not as stuck right. Well, it was on beat, so I mean. Yeah. It wasn't express. He didn't express yeah. and maximize the beat. But talk about momentum, right? This, guy, yeah. That floor lord style. Inertia, yeah. The flow. Yeah, man. It's economic right. at his point. We see that. Yeah, one hundred. But when you know how to account for inertia yeah. by using momentum rather than fighting it. Right. Look at him. Look at him catching the beat. The beat change. Look at him. Okay. Yo, Gravity's evolving. He's leveling up his game, man. That's the one thing he was missing too. Musicality, yeah. fun. Yeah. Oh, that's crazy. The back of the head neck, back of the head head spin, bro. Come on. Come on. In the finals? In the finals? Like that? Who's that? Jigs in the back? Let's yeah, probably. Oh, <laughs> Come Let's... on. Okay, hold on. Come on. Hold on. So, boom. 
I came across this post, El Nino's post on, on Instagram. Shout out to people, El Nino. Um, what should he name this move? Look at this move. The fucking neck, oh my the God. necklace head spin. The kiss. The neck. The, the necklace head spin. Oh my God. There's no neck Let's in see that head spin. Maurizio said he did that. I believe Ooh, that. I believe it. Oh, Mig Mig eighty one. Shout out to Knuckleheads. Call it protect your neck. Oh, uh, yo, that's a, I like that one. I like that one. I like that one. Cerebellum head spin or spins. Okay, dope, dope. He went. Anatomy I like protect your neck. Oh, guillotine spin. Oh, oh, that was kind of dope. Um, love seeing impossible moves like this coming from Kate, Crazy Cujo. Of course he would. That's all we need, Cujo. I hope Cujo is contributing to the conversation and development of judging. How we perceive value in our artistic expression. That is what he maximized on right here. Making impossible moves real. There you go. Um, Let's watch the rest of that battle, battle, man. Hold on. Let's go back to the (laughs) – The spin No. Um, I want to – let me talk about this for a second. Um, let's talk about let's watch the battle and then we'll, let's talk about it after. Okay, you win. <laughs> You're older than me. You got me. Highlight, on highlight. This is our highlight conversation after. Can you see it? Yeah. Okay. That shit was insane. Okay, so what's his serotonin saying now? He just killed that. Yeah. He's like he's on cloud nine right now. He's in cloud nine. Probably the best he hit it ever. He said that in, in that uh, comment that I, I pulled up. He's like, "It's the best yeah. I ever hit it." Yeah, that's what I mean. But I don't okay. know. He, he wasn't in the pocket like this boy. This boy, uh, gravity's in the pocket. Boom, boom. And Yo, there you boom. go. There you go. One moment won't take the whole battle, right? That's the whole thing, right? One moment won't take the battle. You need many moments, and gravity is creating many moments. If if this went on more rounds, the way he's in the pocket, he would he would herb. He would start herbing. Yeah. Let's see what El Nino's final round. So that little reset might have, you know what I mean? I think he's still in the second round right now. I think his mind is still in the second round. Like, yo, that was crazy. Yeah. I think his mind, like, he's still holding, he's still holding on to that. Like, yo, what just happened? I did it. You know what I mean? It's almost like the moment was stronger than his focus in the competition. Like that was El Nino's uh, opportunity to put the nail in the coffin. You know what I mean? Yeah. He could have took that moment, and put the nail in the coffin. Here, let's uh, let's talk about it. Okay. We know yeah. we know who won that, right? Yeah, Gravity won that. Okay, for sure. But you could tell why Gravity was more consistent on all three rounds. You know what I'm saying? Gravity was really consistent on all three rounds. He was throwing a lot of variations versus El Nino, right? Different shapes. Yeah, different type yeah. Of things, different type of movements. Um, one thing about El Nino style is based on the momentum from a windmill, right? His style is built on that first whip of a windmill and then continuing that fluid motion in movement. Like even though the, the inertia is going like this, but then there's different movements, but still doing this while gravity was like, that, 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 bomb, 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 bomb. So they're, like I said, relating to like a lot of good one twos, right? A lot of good one twos, uh, changing direction with flow. You know what I mean? Still taking that and then, and then stopping he danced a little bit more than El Nino. He was a little bit more on top of El Nino, right? If we're talking about like the little movements, right? Mm-hmm. And and full expressive with the little movements too, working well on 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 uh, gravity side. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man. And you know the MMA and breaking parallel, like El Nino threw one bomb and caught him on one bomb. Yeah. But gravity was over there. Pack, pack, pack. Pack, pack, right, on, right. On, come to the ground, pack. Let me do a takedown, pack. Right, you know right. What I mean, yeah. So yeah. again, if it went on longer, just like in a in a MMA fight, if there was no cage and if there was no time limit, the superior man, you know, the outcome would be different with that. Some right. people, if they didn't have those restrictions and play, playing to that, same with this, and, and we we can see that here with this style. He's in right. the pocket. There, there's economy to that. When you're in the pocket and your heart and your soul is tied into the rhythm, the way he was moving, there's little brain calories to think like, oh, what, what am I doing? It's not thinking. 
The music right. is telling you what to do. Yep. And when you're connected here, you have assistance from this higher energy, you know, the sonic yep. frequent uh, frequency energy. My, yeah. The other thing I would think is too, is like I said, there was too much serotonin on El Nino's side with that head spin. It almost blinded him from like, he was still there. He was still like, I can't believe I fucking just hit that shit. To be honest, I think the similar was similar situation happened with hijack and Morris. I think when hijack uh, did that you, big burn, go there. yeah, go there, when yeah. he did that big <laughs> burn, he was like, Oh, you know, to hear that, oh, you're like, Oh shit. Oh, so I you're do? like, yeah, you're yeah. still living in the second round. It's your third round or you're living in that moment versus like, let go of that moment. I got to fucking put the nail in the coffin. You know, I think yeah. that's what happened with El Nino. He was like, oh shit, did I just hit like, fuck, I never hit it so good. It felt good. What it look? He's thinking about the footage already. Like maybe outside of the, like, you know what I mean? Like right then yeah. and there, you know what I'm saying? He be pulsing that kid. He's, he's smart with it. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So that's what I'm saying. It's like, and that's a challenge of being, I just heard this, uh, I forgot what podcast I was listening to. And uh, he was talking about playing football and, Forget you have to have a a, a, a short term memory. Don't look, think about what you just happened. You have to be in the now again. Don't worry if it was good. Don't worry if it was bad. Oh, it was my man Primal from Primal Studies. His podcast. He played football. He said that when he was playing football, like you have to have short term memory. Don't live in the past. Meaning, if it was good or bad, just you have to be here. And I think maybe part of what happened with El Nino was like, fuck, that shit was crazy, right? So he has to like regain focus again. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, what, what a matchup, right? Dude. Dynamically, they, they both are on a high level. Crazy. Ridic their, their genetics, their, their training, their time in the game, the development of their style, right? You mentioned the Floor Lord style. There's flow to it. Mm -hmm. The composition of the Floor Lord style is yeah. just hope. It's just legendary. It's iconic, yep. right? And yep. El Nino still doing it to this day. 100. Yeah. The, the whip and the momentum that he, he maintains. That yes. Maintains, you know, yes. That. So yes. For me, that's what I'm looking at when I see it. Is this yes. beautifully economic movement. Very little waste. Everything flows and it rebounds yes. at the right point. Um, seeing gravity apply economics via being in the pocket of the funk break, of the beat. Seeing that is, is beautiful, man. Um, and... Where the advantage gravity had in this right here is he just presented more shapes. Mm -hmm. And again, and, and be, being in, in tune with the music, everything he, he did right there is going to look different the next time he does it. Because right. unless he gets the same track and he, he gets right. the same feel, the same floor, the same environment, right. that's the beauty of breaking. And that's the factor that um, – the unpredictable factor that we need to add to breaking and educate on for spectators, right? For fighting, it's like, yes. oh, is he going to get knocked out? Is he going to get tapped out? Are they right. going to go the distance? Yes. Um, what, what, what comes with that with predictability? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vegas, baby. Vegas. Right. <laughs> yeah. so, He's a Vegas, baby. But, yeah, no, that's just real, bro. That's real. Yeah. And I, I'm, I'm glad you related that to, like, you know, what's going on in MMA, what's going on here. Um, you know, it's dope because you could tell that Gravity is learning his lessons from his previous battles, too battling all month too he's actually learning okay maybe i i need to stay here in this pocket versus trying to like maybe i need to stay calm versus like going all out whatever it is right whatever it is he's i feel like he's learning his lessons from from each battle which is he used to be off to the races right right so right right <laughs> yeah Let's more and more yeah yep yeah. more and more he's starting to learn those lessons which is good and when you're battling this much, you should be learning lessons. If you're going by the same game plan, nah. You should be, especially like you're, you're, you're getting more experience on that floor. And you should be analyzing your footage instead of like what a lot of b-boys and b-girls do. Oh, the judges are whack. They didn't, no. Stop yeah. doing that. Analyze your footage. How did I lose? Don't, don't look, at, don't. So my, my suggestion to all you b-boys and b-girls, don't look at how you won. Look how, at how you lost. Just like what we did in Sunny. We didn't look, look at like how she lost. We looked at how she won. You know, and there's things that she needs to work. Everyone has things to work on. But the, when you're watching footage, when you're there, think that if you want to call the judges out, sure, whatever. But if you want to like go far in competition, you got to start asking how you lost. Even if the, even if the judges are biased. 
How did I still yeah, lose? Yeah. How did I still lose even if the judges are biased? Because honestly, if you have a moment, the guy that can hate you the most will still vote for you because I, I got to give it up for that round. Like, mm -hmm. I just, you know what? I can't hate on that round. No matter what that person, I don't care. That was amazing. You know what I'm saying? That was amazing. I can't take nothing away. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, man. Good show, dude. This one, yo, this one's for the books, man. This one's for the yeah, books. Episode man. three is for the books. We got some good hot takes in this one. Yeah, man. Good, uh, good job recommending this this topic. I, I've had interviews, um, you know, with Boogeyman, with Courage from Headhunters, uh, Flowmaster, of course. You know, people who dabble in both and have high skill sets and intelligence in both MMA right. and uh, breaking and dancing. And this topic wasn't really. The, I, I like what you did. It's unique. It's important, and it's very, very contextual. Right. Where we are right now, and yes. what's going to contribute to a greater progressive conversation. So, exactly what we're trying to do with Gearheads. There you go. Gearheads Breakcast. Boy! Breakcast, baby. <laughs> Breakcast. Um, yeah, so, again, yo. So, yeah. Yeah, if you, uh, just if you want more content like this, press like first on this video, then press the subscribe button. Then press the bell at the top for notifications for more stuff. Because we're doing shorts too, baby. And then eventually we're going to do like tutorials and all that type right. of stuff. All that good sweetness. You know what I mean? Yes. Uh, and I'm excited for that with, you know, the mastermind of me and you. Right. Your skill set, my skill set. Um, yeah, man. It's, it's yeah, next dude. level stuff, man. Yeah. So um, before we sign off, where can they find you, Jay? Oh, actually, before we sign off, we got to give a shout out to our sponsor. Yep, CBD, uh, sponsored by Zen World. Check out zenworld.com. If you have stress, anxiety, muscle aches, pains, anything like that, you don't need drugs. You don't need anything that can alter your body in a negative way. CBD is the future of it. And here we are. Zen World is the place for that, guys. 10% off with our promo code, Gearheads. Yes, we are sponsored. Yes, this is a business. But yes, we want to build this. That, that, is, oh, that yeah. is the ultimate goal with this, guys. So thank you for listening. And please continue to support the way Profo just mentioned. Yep. And so before we sign off again, where can they find you on social media, Jay? So right, right at the bottom banner right here, my friend. BTR Breaking. Um, my personal is High State Rocker. Check me out. It's a little more informal. But if you want some valuable information regarding biomechanics uh mechanics training how to warm up we throw in some cultural stuff in there as well and again profo is helping me with that but yeah pro and what about yourself uh you can find me on instagram at profo underscore flgz or on facebook facebook.com slash profo w-o-n capital f-l-g-z and on YouTube right here, P-R-O-F-O-W-O-N. I'll be coming up. Uh, I'll be posting more lifestyle mindset videos. My next one is breaking and the practice of Wim Hof breathing techniques. How it helps me. Being nice a 46-year-old B-boy. So, yeah, that's what's going on. Word. Everybody, peace right. out. Yep. We'll see you guys next week. We're here every Thursday. Stay posted. Yeah, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. I'm out. We out. Peace.